Hey everyone, it's uh, David Barnett from davidcbarnett.com, the blog site, YouTube channel, iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play podcast, where I talk about buying, selling, managing, and financing small and medium-sized businesses. And uh, going through the list of questions that you guys sent in this year, I actually got a couple of questions that were about people in HR. And um, what's funny is I have an HR degree, but I have no employees and I don't like people that much. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so what I did is I assembled a bit of a people panel so we can talk about some of this stuff with some people that have a little bit more experience with people. And so uh, I'm joined here by, with Betty Kempa from bettykempa.com. And Betty, you are a career coach. You help people who are dissatisfied in their career find their calling and and, mm -hmm. and and then get themselves from A to B to get into that position. Is that does that sum things up pretty well? Yeah, you got it. It's it's all about helping people figure out uh, what their passion is and, and then building a plan to get them into that. Oh, great. Yeah. And we're also joined by my buddy Rick Nicholson, who... Um, you know, kind of went through this himself because he went to university to become an accountant and ended up in the world of marketing and now owns restaurants and has to hire people all the time. So, so I've got, we're, we're, we got a great question from Martin. Okay. And so Martin has discovered my stuff on, on YouTube and on the internet and he's interested in buying a business, but his concern is, is how do I know what kind of business I should be looking at if I've only ever worked for other people, which I thought was a great question because sometimes um, we don't quite know what it is that we really want to do, do we? No, absolutely not. Uh, yeah. It's, it's kind of one of those, I'm asked that question all the time from entrepreneurs and they're like, well, I want to do something I'm passionate about. And the one thing that I, <clears throat> excuse me, the one thing I've been telling them lately is you can't find passion. It finds you. Oh, that's good. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Betty, what about you? Do you do some kind of an analysis or have some kind of tool that you help people with? Yeah, it's, um, you know, I, I tell my clients to, to become detectives. So put on your detective hat and, and kind of get to work. Um, and, and what I coach people through is examining the inner and the outer. So there's, for, for me, there's two different parts of it. It's examining what's going on on the inside and then what's going on in the outside world. And and then kind of cross-referencing the two of those. Mm. Um, so there's, there's four different directions I would tell people to kind of look from an inner perspective, and there's four directions from an outer perspective um, that I would kind of guide people on. Okay. So by directions, do you mean sort of things like, um, like experience and, you know, like what, what kind of yeah. like aspects would you be talking about? So from an inside perspective, and I always like to start inside before you start, you know, looking in the outside world, look, look on the inside. Um, and I, I, I love what you said about your passion finds you. And I, I'm a, a huge believer of that, but really taking a look at what are my personal interests. So it's almost like you have to do um, uh, an inventory on, on what I'm interested in, what I'm, what I'm passionate about. It's, it's a major amount of time that, that you're investing in your business, energy, time, money. So um, you have to love what you're doing. Um, and that's one of the key success drivers is uh, being interested in what you do, um, especially when the going gets tough, right? Or, or revenue is unpredictable. Um, it's got to be something that's lighting a flame from within for you. Mm. So that's number one. Um, number two is really doing an inventory of your skills, experience, and talent. So of course, having prior experience in a particular industry is going to give you that pre-existing training, industry knowledge, uh, network, vendors, suppliers, all that kind of familiarity with your target market. But that being said, if you don't have the, the experience, and I, I always tell this to my clients, um, go get it. So, you know, go undercover boss, um, dip your toe in the water, um, work in that industry a little bit um, before you take the plunge. Um, because again, you're just being a detective, you're gathering clues. Um, that, that's a great point, yeah. Betty. I, I, I just want to, I want to tell a little story about that because, yeah. um, you know, for, for my clients who are in my business buyer advantage group coaching program, one of the things we do is an inventory. It's, it's just, as you mentioned, you know, what's my experience, what are my interests? Um, from time to time, I do have people there who say, but I don't know what I want. I don't know where I want to go. And, and I encourage them to work on that, but I, you know, I don't really have a, a tool specifically for that. But I remember back when I had my business brokerage office, there was a business I was selling and it was a fried chicken franchise. Hmm. I would get people who were like, 
middle managers at the power company or bankers or people who worked for the government. And they would come in and they were being driven by the numbers. They saw what the sales mm. were and what the earnings were. And I would ask them, have you ever worked in a fast food environment? And they would say no. And I would say, well, why don't you go and work in a, in a place like that and see if you can even imagine yourself in this environment. And, and I would tell them, you know, go down to McDonald's and just tell them you're willing to work Saturday night because even the kids won't work Saturday night and they'll hire you right then. And, and people would, would be taken aback. They'd be like, Oh, well, I can't go work at McDonald's. I, I, I'm this, you know, middle manager guy. What if someone sees me? And then, and then my response to that was, well, how are you going to react when they see you on the golf course after you buy this business? If this business doesn't jive with your sense of, yeah. of who you are and self image, are you ever going to actually commit and close this deal? Right. Rick, I mean, you own some restaurants like has any of this kind of thing. And, and, and what's, I think what's important to know is that you own a couple of different restaurants in different sort of market tiers, right? Like yeah. you've got sit down full service as well as sort of the, the takeout counter type places. Um, did you go through some of this thinking when you were on this path? Yeah, absolutely. So there's, so in the restaurant world, we've all eaten in a restaurant at some time or another, and there's this romance associated with sitting at a table, talking to a friend or a loved one while someone else serves you and the food comes and then it goes away and all you have to do is pay for the food and the service at the end of it. And so there's this romance of, Oh my God, this is something I would like to do. And so I've seen many times, uh, people who would want to get in the restaurant business, similar to your fried chicken story, where once they got in on the, on the other side of the fence, they realized, wait a minute, there's nothing romantic about this. Yeah, and it's work. It's hard work. Yeah. Um, and, and I had that example when I transitioned from mid-level uh, management into entrepreneurship. I, uh, I went to work at, a, at one of the restaurants. It was a franchise. And I went to work at one of the other restaurants uh, as a cook. And I had never cooked in my life. I don't even like cooking at home. And, uh, and I was like, well, if I'm going to own this, I really got to really do this. And, and I realized quickly that, you know, it wasn't bad. It was work and, you know, I don't, I don't hate work. So it was just, it was a system and a process. And once you got through it and you figured it out, it wasn't that big of a deal. But I'll tell you, it's a shot to the ego. And mm. when, you're, when you're a mid-level exec and you're making decent money and all of a sudden you're working for $9 an hour and all your old colleagues starts coming in and noticing that you're there cooking, um, it, it's, it's hard. Even though I knew there was a greater plan, uh, watching other people, watching me, it, uh, it was difficult. But it was absolutely, without a doubt in my mind, the stepping stone that, re that I needed in order to get to you know, the second step. Um, so I absolutely, I, I say the same thing. People want to open a coffee shop, go get a job at Starbucks. You know, yeah. you want to you just, just go work somewhere. I don't do it on the weekends, do it at nights. You, you might as well understand right now your time when you're starting a business is a commodity and, uh, and it's, it's the work that you're going to have to put in up front and stop counting your hours and how much you're making an hour because it's not worth it. So just, just loot, forget, forget your free time and go invest, uh, knowledge and education wise, just go learn, go learn and see if it's something you want to do. So it, it sounds like what we're getting, what we're coming around to is that people can do all kinds of analysis on themselves, but really they should go test things out. Absolutely. Yeah. How about you, Betty, before you left your world in the, in the corporate world, did you start doing some coaching work just to see if you thought it was going to be something for you? Yeah. You know, as, as I started to examine, you know, again, I took my own personal inventory of what do I do for free? What do I do in my spare time? What kind of skills do I use that come naturally um, where I'm just in a state of flow? And what I discovered as I started kind of looking at my, my, my storyline was for free in my spare time, I'd be coaching colleagues and uh, you know people would come to me trying to figure out, oh, I want to get into this this different industry or this different role. I don't know how to get there. And just naturally I'd be kind of coaching them through, you know, why they were passionate about the resume, the LinkedIn. I love networking, negotiating. Um, so, you know, in kind of looking at that, I realized I'm already doing this stuff. So why don't I just build a business around it? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and you started like, uh, you started your business from scratch. So you, you went out there and started, and did you start it before you left the corporate world? 
Oh, that's a good question. Uh, you know what? I, I took what I call a bridge job. So I previously had been in a highly stressful uh, yeah. corporate environment where I really didn't have a lot of room to breathe. So what I did was I took a bridge job, still in the corporate world, but it just wasn't as intense and stressful mm -hmm. and it freed up my time. So for about eight months, I moonlighted nights and weekends um, going to this intensive coach training um, and started coaching clients, getting coached, all that good stuff. So it was, I took a bridge role, I I'd moonlighted and then once the business was up and running and website was live and I had clients coming in, I made the transition. Yeah, very, very strategic. Yeah. I, I think that's, yeah. And, and would that be a strategy that you teach some of your clients to? Oh, absolutely. And it, you know, it depends on their situation. So if, if they're currently in a job that gives them some breathing room, that's, that's one thing we, we kind of analyze, you know, I have some people that were just laid off. I have some people that are in toxic environments, so they really need to get out and get that bridge job and that breathing room. Um, but most definitely we want to build a strategy that makes sense for what that particular person is dealing with. Okay. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, Rick, let, you went from accounting to the marketing to restaurant ownership, but you're still interested in marketing. You work with other businesses on their marketing issues. Do you think that these things are static or do you think that these things are in flux? I mean, you know, do the interests that motivate people change over time for, for you or what do you think? Well, I mean, I think I think as individuals, we're always looking for continuous growth, whether it's conscious or unconscious. We're look and growth. I mean, in some cases, it could be just money. They're looking for the extrinsic extrinsic reward of growth. But no, I don't think it's static at all. I mean, if I look at my transition, when when I when I came out in out of university, I, I wanted to be an accountant because I just love numbers. But that that tool that and that education I gained has helped me immensely in the, in the formulation of, of the business and, and how, you know, looking at the, the financial metrics of the business and understanding what needs to be improved on and so on. Um, but today, I mean, I, I want to be, I want to be a writer, right? I want to be a marketer. I, there's, there's all of these other things that I want to do in life. And, uh, and I, and I'm actually, you know, I'm, I'm con continuously experimenting with different things and, and it's just, I just want to keep going. Like life is too short. Let's, let's enjoy yeah. it. And, and uh, yeah, you know, today you caught me in a t-shirt and a hat and it's my day off and it's a Friday, but it's the first day off I've had in, in three weeks. <laughs> and, uh, but, but I enjoy it. Right. It's not like it, for me, it's not work. It's, it's just enjoying life and, and doing some cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's great. Um, so let, let, let me, let me ask you this then. Um, do you think that you will like people talk all the time about passion and being driven by passion and having passions and stuff. And, and then sometimes I'll get questions from people that I talk to and they'll say, well, if everyone has to be driven by their passion, who's going to fix leaky roofs? <laughs> like there, there's all kinds of things out there that you would think are, you would have a hard time about developing a passion with. And then you just mentioned someone who wanted to grow with money. And so you know, was just simply earning money one of the things that attracted you to one of those businesses? Yeah, no question. I mean, I'd, I'd lie if I, if I said otherwise. Um, the beginning was all about money. And I'm not saying money doesn't make the world go round. I mean, because without it, you'll do some crazy stuff. Um, but once, once that baseline of a certain amount of money that I needed to survive with was there, mm -hmm. uh, it became other things. And, uh, so, so today, you know, I, I mean, we haven't talked about it, but I own three restaurants with 65 employees yeah. and, and, you know, and I'm looking at maybe part purchasing a fourth one and, and I'm like, okay, well, am I going to be this restaurant guru? No, I'm not going to probably own more than four, but, but you know, it's all about what else do I want to do in this? And what is, what do I want my life to look like? Yeah. Now I've also put in 15 years into entrepreneurship. So it's not like, you know, I just started last week, but at the end of the day, it, it money is a factor, and in the absence of it, will make you do some crazy stuff. Yeah, I, know. I, I I definitely agree with you there. I've seen more people do bad things because of the lack of money mm. than people do the extra mile to get the extra dollar. I, in fact, I've read some studies, and I I don't have any references here today, but I've read studies that say happiness and money do correlate, but only up to about seventy five thousand yeah. dollars, right? Exactly. And so, so once a person's, you know, basic lifestyle is paid for, you know, 
in a pretty comfortable basic lifestyle. You know, they get their cars, they're going on a vacation, they're, they're clothed, they're fed, they're going out every once in a while. Um, then really, you know, doubling the money doesn't double the happiness anymore. No, it just doubles the debt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, look, let's, let's, let's wind this up and let me ask each of you if, if you're talking to Martin and he's saying, I don't know what kind of business that I should be buying because I've only ever worked for other people. What little bit of advice would you give to him? Uh, Betty, let's start with you. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, what we've talked about so far for sure, but also taking a look at, you know, you had mentioned lifestyle as well. So, so what are your lifestyle goals, right? Like, is this a side hustle or is this your livelihood? How involved do you want to be? Do you want to be day-to-day -day operations or are you more hands-off? So you got to take a look at your lifestyle um, mm. and really tap into your why. why. Why are you really looking to buy this? Being really authentic and honest with yourself. Um, you know, is this to support the family? Is this to build an empire? Um, you have to build an inner mission that's so powerful that nothing is going to stop you from moving forward. Um, but then again, as we were saying, you got to combine that with getting, getting out there into the real world and doing some major research. And, and then it, it, that's the point at which you can start to cross-reference what's going on inside with what's going on out in the world. Mm, great. Rick, what, do you, what would you say to Martin? Um, I would take stock of the things that you've already done and the things that you've liked doing in the past and identify those things and what really, what really got your juices flowing inside of them. Um, if you were an accountant and you really like talking to people, well, then you have this skill maybe that you want to you wanna develop further. Um, but what, it doesn't have to necessarily be an accounting firm or anything like that. It's just find out what really got you going every day and what, what thing you really look forward to, to doing that, that, that got you out of the bed in the morning and got excited about. And then start looking around at businesses that you may be able to tap into that more often than not. And the crappy stuff you didn't like to do, then hopefully the new business that you're looking at, you won't have to do that. And, uh, and just, just keep looking around. And, and as we said earlier, try some stuff, go talk to some people, maybe, maybe people that are in the business. And if you're afraid that the, the, that business, uh, that your competitors won't talk to you or your potential customer c competitors, then go to another market and try to talk to people in other markets about, about that business. Mm -hmm. Try to learn as much about it as you can. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that that's one of the things that I've come across too over time is that people are afraid just to do that old school kind of networking, like yeah. calling people up they don't know and just saying, Hey, this is who I am. I'm just wondering if you would share with me. And what people find so surprising is that the majority of the time people do want to share. Mm -hmm. People genuinely are helpful giving people most of the time. Um, even if they can't talk to you right then, like they, they want to help you out. Nobody, I, I find very few people want to see somebody else have a hard time, you know? Good. Yeah. All right. So Betty, if, if people want to join with you online and, and learn some more about what you do or reach out to you, what's the best way for them to find you? Yeah. Um, so I'm just at bettykempa.com, K-E-M-P-A. Um, so you can check it out there. And, and I have a free surefire guide to finding your passion that you can download as well. Awesome. And Rick, if people want to talk with you or work with you on some of the marketing work that you do with other entrepreneurs, what's the best way for them to reach you? Uh, the email that we use for the marketing side of my business is rick at the rest of, uh, sorry, rick at wizardofads.com. Wizard of Ads. And those are the Wizard of Ads from Austin, right? Austin. You're an associate of those guys. All right. Thank you guys so much. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Right. Thanks, David. Thanks.